trip to the bathroom and back. Took everything out of me. Uh, but my neighbor came over and brought me this. I took one of these. Be better. Pain is inside the body. Apparently, I do not have a very large hematoma on my back, which makes me think that probably they've removed some organs in there, and it kind of got me a little sore. Or something. But I have decided to go against the idea of going to the doctors. Principally because I don't like doctors. It's not my favorite time of day. I mean, I go to the doctor, I check my eyes, and they always want to rip my eye open and put a strata glass in there and have cataracts. And that's just not something you do to get treatment. And I'm thinking that the pain will actually get better as the time progresses. If it doesn't, then I'll go to the doctors. Because that means there's probably some internal organs that are damaged and then I have to try to check and see what to do about it. I don't think there's internal bleeding because um, there hasn't been any swollen with the, the you know, swollen. Nothing swollen. And the pain is exactly uh, on the, um, I guess you would call it, right, a little bit above the right kidney area. I'm going to check online and see if there's any important organs in there. I don't think so, but um, let me check it out real quick. You know, it's not about self-medication and all that shit. It's about the cost of medicines and doctors and shit and the uh, necessity for it. It's, if you bleed to death, you got an internal organ busted, somebody needs to take care of it, and they usually can't anyway. There's not much they can do about it. But if you have a, a, a strong back pain, and you're not dying. Now, I am a little sweaty because of the pain. But if I'm not dying, uh, from the pain, you just place, you know, just a stiff upper lip and hold it in. It's a better, better medicine. Well, you should have something to keep you going. Anything else you want to know, guys? This is my life. This is me. Oh, I guess since I'm here and I can't really move around too much, I'll try to ramble on about some other things that are of interest. I have political and social interest. Starting with religion. Last night, I don't know. It's, uh, it's when the pain was really intense. And I was uh, passed out on the floor. Um... I prayed. I did some praying. And I prayed specifically to the mother of Benedicta Mary. Because I see her as God's mother. And that's a very special point in my position. She is, to a lot of sects of Christianity, the devil. I don't care if she is or not. Mother takes a very special place in my heart. We all envelop in her divine mother, Durga Ma, Kali, Lakshmi. So, why do I pray to the mother and not to the father? Uh, could be because I feel 
the time to run over to the father. Uh, and then the child says, well, why are you crazy the father? And the father says, because it's, um, it's not like I don't really need them, but I just don't feel it. But I choose consciously to go to run with them. I do that when I'm really hurt or when I'm really feeling like I'm going to die. Because um, if I do die, I don't have anybody to move me back to me. Not if anybody cares or saw me from the ashes of my body. <laughs> she is tired. She Is, but also the hour of the time we are buried in her and go back to her and die. That's, that's a fact. Some of us get cremated, but the ashes are not going to go back. So somehow our substance nourishes it. And that's, a, that's on the one hand, a Inspiring thought, but in a way, tender thought. On the other, it's kind of terrifying. Who a peasant is? I don't know what a peasant is. I don't know what even that is. Constant pain if you are not just that hurt. And so my hurts tend to be always shocking. And yet, I feel that it's not a good idea to shock them with my emotions. So, behind me there. You know, smoking mirrors. So, what to do about such social justice? Well, I believe the, uh, the uh, foundation for social justice is right there. Tobacco society. Building and put up for leaders, but it's not practical there because the leaders that are being put up are necessarily making good, uh, and they get uh, they hide only the things that make them powerful and that give them power. So for instance, the FBS is a good and bad system um, has a big flaw, which is that the powerful that are not being used by leaders, when things are powerful. That are going to make good things. Uh, socialism has the problem that the leading members of the powerful would always be on a preferable status to everybody else, so they will have more resources and certain impunity. That's the idea. Um, philosopher King. choice of the social order because the king somehow is the owner of things but also the one responsible for the welfare of things which makes it uh, imperative that he actually brings welfare to his people otherwise he'll get 
face to Friday. That seems like a sensible idea. And practical, I guess. But the problem with any social system is humanity itself. The ambition, the, the uh, corrosive nature of human desire would somehow fuck everything up and make everything bad. And then there's this weird thing where it's like, put yourself in the shoes of a soldier. You know, you, you know, you're joining in on your job and going to the ROTC and make some money. And maybe there's a patriotic side to you. And suddenly you shipped off to some godforsaken land like Afghanistan or Iraq. Iraq. And you're going to have to kill these people that you don't even know. These people that have no meaning to you whatsoever. Other than the meaning that is given to you by your generals, brigade leaders. And obviously these people don't want to get killed, so they're always trying to kill you back to make more money so that you can raise tributes against them. And you put yourself in a situation where you have to die and or be or killed or be battle. You have to kill or die or be killed. To support what exactly? Democracy? Freedom? American way? Let's turn it over to uh, Mexico. A government that is officially almost corrupt, which has brought us untold suffering to millions of people throughout many years. And still, people don't really care about it because it's their government and we expect them to treat us that way. So, by buying rights to your sacred lands and all that stuff. The vision of the government is one that's been antagonistic from the start. So if they don't really believe in it, people that want to get into the government or be condemned to blow up or killed would do it for personal ambition and an interest in, in getting a, a piece of the pie and just that. And folks know that. Folks are not, you know, blind to that, that fact. Um, somehow it's more natural. More vibrant because somehow you get the idea of a least personal ambition and these, you know, uh, egomaniacs that run for office. Uh, you know what to expect out of them. You know, it's coming. You know, you make yourself ideas that they're going to save society. No. They're just another bunch of ambitious fools trying to take their piece of the pie. And we accept them as such. You know, they're trying to take the least of the, uh, of the, the least evil of them. Because you know, those are the ones that are going to buy you the torta. So somehow the relationship between government and people has been lost. And that's why guys like El Chapo Guzman, Paprika, those you know, leaders of organized crime were actually hugely um, popular. Because they're just like politicians, in a sense. Which is really comical if you think about it. It's ridiculous. That it is the way it is. It is the way how it works. Mexico is a very complex crime. Now, who brings hope to the masses? And why would one want to bring hope to the masses? The masses need to get spiritually awakened so they can actually be able to move themselves or to the planet. There's no sense in giving hope to people that all, all they really want is a car and a big screen TV and a big apartment. Those ambitions, those desires are not what it's about. And Awakening people to that, awakening people to the fact that there are 
other value in twenty six three. Red shirt is the real George. George Bush is the George to awaken people and bring their youth to the Vietnam War to the generation. And uh, the fact that the war was popular was a war that was in the Yellow River where the Dorsch Center is the Red Shirt. Speaks about that, speaks about the art of violence, the people who are willing to be awakened. I didn't know the bombs and the destruction, massive destruction and death was going to awaken people, but it was certainly one of the ways. Because the way you plan to kill, you'll get political help. Then, the bottom line of it is that you have other family killed, even when he's young, in old age. And the idea is to go beyond those types of rituals and go to the world of the dead. Producing that child society is like a, like a real storm of confusing and selfish desires that reach up to heaven stinking like a whole thing. So we destroy our egos, we take down our homes, our own forests, we exterminate entire species of human and living beings in the name of our own greed and ambition. When the poachers of Africa killing the last rhino in Africa. The, uh, the mining companies from Canada, Vancouver, destroy vast amounts of land, fracking, the whole fracking bullshit, fracking is a matter of instincts. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why can't we all just get along? What must one do to do his part or his, his or her part to help awaken the sleeping masses? The answer is to live well, to live awake, not to lie, not to cheat. To masturbate to Japanese pornography, Japanese manga pornography, exceedingly. To masturbate awake every day to have an addiction, become an otaku. Be honest, be clear, be loving, be tender. Seek not vengeance today. Seek not justice even because justice has never really been the infinite term is justice is always almost always based on vengeance. In other words, we have a death in the family or imprisonment. Um, don't judge others, least you be judged. We were told in the Bible that people need to do it in the Bible. <laughs> people need to pay good attention to what they hear. It was true though. Basic principle of good living in life. Don't covet a neighbor's wife. Well, it's not going to be simple, is it? And yet, who does that? <sighs> My entire tarot business is based on coveting the neighbor's wife. Who coveted who? Golden rule of 
perhaps that's the simplest way to do it. We want to add energy, but have other storage in there. Like Japanese pornography, you should have left. help from the mother and the father from heaven from the damnity of caverns of black clay. We'll vanquish them. And we'll become a better person. So so or we'll die being an evil bastard. And we'll deserve hell and tarnation. But here's where I get in trouble with Christianity. And Islam it's a hell. Now, I've been there, so I know it exists. In my case, it was with ayahuasca, and it was very clearly Verdun or some trench in, in Belgium, Germany, or France. And there was a lot of dead people that couldn't leave their bodies because they were dead, but they were still awake. They were still inside their bodies. In perpetual torment. It's called hell, isn't it? Perpetual torment. It's a cold hell. It's snow and ice in there. Ooh. I guess each hell is very personalized to whatever your crimes are and whatever your needs are. Mine was a cold hell. It'll be a cold day in hell, boy. Where I am at home. Suffering the uh, punishment of the damned, which I most certainly deserve at that moment. Watching all these millions of beings also suffering the punishment of the damned. And um, this whole time it's not a journal. There's an exit clause in there. So I go to the other realm, which in my case was Chichen Itza, the pyramid there. And they're still all dead. But now we're all dancing, we're all brothers and sisters, and we're all loving each other. There's every imaginable race of men in there. Yellow, brown, black, white. And at the top of the pyramid, there's this priest uh, with, a, with a a loincloth. Green and white loincloth. And under the priest is this huge, gigantic feathered serpent with white feathers and green crest. Kind of like turning around in the uh, pyramid. And the people are dancing to the serpent. And the serpent has people on its back. And it's really wide. It's wide as this room is now. It's going to be wide. People are riding the serpent up and down the pyramid. And uh, the reason we're in heaven is because we're brothers and sisters. We all love each other. Hola. Hola. Ahora sí, ¿qué hacías en mi blog? Me atropellaron, chica. ¿Cómo que me atropellaron? Me atropellaron. 
¿Pero cómo fue esa? Pues salí de la tienda. Ajá. Ah, salí de la tienda. Es el callejoncito ese con el que tiene. ¿Dónde está la mecha? Ahí enfrente de la mecha. Ajá, ajá. 